Life that lives is life successful, and success is the breath of its nostrils. The achievement of a difficult feat is successful adjustment to a sternly exacting environment. The more difficult the feat, the greater the satisfaction at its accomplishment. Thus it is with the man who leaps forward from the springboard, out over the swimming pool, and with a backward half revolution of the body, enters the water head first. Once he leaves the springboard, his environment becomes immediately savage. And savage the penalty it will exact should he fail and strike the water flat. My name is Ben Saunders. I've spent the last 17 years leading expeditions to the coldest places on the planet. is hopeless. One of the things that fascinated me about Antarctica is that we didn't know much about it until relatively recently. There were better maps of the moon because they could see it through telescopes. For a long time, I had this dream of doing something in Antarctica. Scott and his two teammates, the last three to die on that Terra Nova expedition, they'd covered nearly 1,600 miles on foot, and that's a record that stood until 2014. To me, it became almost an obsession. How come no one's finished this journey and what would it take to do it? But I just became fascinated by, that, by this idea of, of limits and endurance. In 2013, with my teammate Tarka, you know, we spent nearly four months walking from the coast, from Ross Island, to the South Pole, back to the coast again, 1,800 miles near on, in some pretty tough you know, conditions. I've been so consumed, all of my time, all of my energy had gone into this enormous expedition, this huge goal, huge project that took up everything I had. Of course, when you succeed, when you, when you do it, when you take it off, it sort of evaporates. The sort of paradox now is after nearly two decades of this stuff, in a lot of ways, the least adventurous thing I could do now would be another polo expedition. Like, I've kind of figured that out. So I've got some other adventures in other fields sort of bubbling away. I think I've learned a lot about the importance of persistence. Just this sort of ability to kind of keep going, even when everything seems hopeless, and, and believing that ultimately there's a way somehow, there's always a way. It feels like that self-belief, that sort of confidence and courage, it's, it's a kind of malleable human quality. It's a bit like physical fitness or strength. And, and the more you stretch it, the stronger it gets. I've always loved being active, and especially in the outdoors. And the more wild the backdrop, the happier I seem to be. I think I'm more interested now in telling the story of these places and, and sharing them perhaps even with like, the next generation. There aren't many uncharted bits of the planet left. I still think there's possibly a greater need than ever for people that are spending time in the wilder corners of the planet and coming back and telling the story. So I feel that there's definitely a role for explorers in terms of educating, hopefully inspiring, um, particularly young people, to take a great interest in the, in the world around them. As for myself, I'd rather be that man than the fellows who sit on the bank and watch him. Here am I, a little animal called a man. I'm a creature of temperature. Fallible and frail. A bit of pulsating, jelly-like life, it is all I am. About me are the great natural forces, colossal menaces, titans of destruction, unsentimental monsters that have less concern for me than I have for the grain of sand I crush under my foot. 
They have no concern at all for me. They do not know me. In the maze and chaos of the conflict of these vast and drafty titans, it is for me to thread my precarious way. The bit of life that is I will exult over them. Here is ferocious environment, and here is difficult adjustment, the achievement of which is delight to the small quivering vanity that is I. I like, I am so made.